What's up everyone, Max Tech Toy Box here. So um going to go ahead and give you guys my final thoughts and review of the Momvoid Tick Watch Pro 4G LTE. So I did purchase this off of Amazon and I actually got it like a $22 uh, $20 discount. So I got it for like $279.99. So this is the 4G LTE version. So that means that you can connect this with Verizon. And so therefore you can get like on incoming calls and text messages without having to be connected to your cellular device. Okay. So really quickly, let's just go ahead and go over the design of the watch. So you see here, this comes out to be, I think it's probably around like 44 millimeters. Um, I don't think they actually have the published size on here. I know that it uses the 22 millimeter watch straps, but they do not have, nope, they don't have a published size. If I do find out that information, I will place it in the um, description of the video below. But anyways, it does use the 22 millimeter um, watch straps. Um, I do have my own sort of third party watch strap here on my old fossil band. Um, so you do have these, these do not rotate but they are buttons, actionable buttons in Android Wear or for Wear OS on the watch. Turning it over, you do have your diodes to measure your heart rate. I believe this comes out to be either two or four sensors. I think it's two sensors on each side. Um, here is your pogo pick for your proprietary charging dock, unfortunately. Um, and then, like I said, the quick strap detect, um, detection detachable quick strap 22 millimeter watch straps. Um, again, this is my own, but if you have 22 millimeter watch straps, you can connect them fairly simple and easy. Um, so overall, it is a very, um, I'd say rugged sport type watch. This is supposed to be like military grade STD, um, stainless steel around the outside here. Um, this part is some sort of plastic. I think that they tried to say that this was stainless steel, but it's not, um, it feels like a hard plastic. I could be wrong, but at least in my hands, that's what it feels like. I have sort of scuffed it against different things and things have buffed out, but hmm. So in my opinion, I think it's a decent looking watch. It's not the most elegant or futuristic um, or novice looking watch, especially if you're comparing it to something like the Galaxy Active 2, but it looks decent. It looks like your traditional sports watch. So up front, as we can see, you do have your screen. This is the second layer here that is sitting on top of the display that helps um, for your device to get the proclaimed 30 day battery life in essential mode. So the way that it comes out of the box is once the OLED essentially times out, this comes up. And as you can see, well, so now I just tapped it and so the OLED um, screen came up, but there it goes off. And so you get the time, the date, the number of steps that you have. And in this bar right here tells you um, your battery percentage roughly. So I think it, the max it goes up to is like five bars and that'd be a hundred. So it just gives you a rough estimate of your battery. Okay, so double tapping here. And underneath that, you just got your standard Android Wear um, with your actionable, actionable notifications underneath when you swipe up. You swipe to the right, you access your Google Assistant. Swipe down, you'll be able to go into your settings. Um, airplane mode, Google Play, you can turn on, um, it's like theater mode. You can ring your phone, do not disturb. And then of course, go into additional settings in here. Um, so yeah, and then you swipe to the white and then these are your widgets um, that essentially, they bit this directly from Tizen, which I'm okay with, I like that actually. So these are just some widgets that I have set up. Right now, and then of course, if you want to add more, you just hold it down, swipe over, add a title, and these are the different things that you can add. So goals from Google Fit, heart points, heart rate, headlines, tick exercise, forecast, things of that nature. Okay, so that is your back button, and then this, I believe, launches tick health, so you can go in to start a workout. Okay, so um, yeah, so you can go in and start a workout, like I said, and like I said, this is the essentially the, the home button. Alrighty, so now that we've gone and just done sort of a brief walkthrough of the device, let's go over things that I like about this. So first of all, this is definitely the most fluid Wear OS has been on any watch that I have used, and I have used quite a few Wear OS devices. Um, even I had the uh, the Fossil Gen 5 with the Snapdragon 3100 and the one gigabyte of RAM. This has the Snapdragon 2100 and one gigabyte of RAM, and it's smoother than the Fossil Gen 5, which is really 
um, weird. Well, it's not too weird once you actually look into it. The Wear 3100 chipset was supposed to be made to help battery life a lot um, with Wear OS devices. Um, my boy took a different approach to help to um, moderate how much battery loss you essentially get. So they don't need, they didn't need the Wear 3100 chipset. But it did sort of um, surprise me that the Wear 2100 paired with it with this one gigabyte of RAM was able to make this, like I said, the most fluid Wear OS device I've had. I've had no hiccups whatsoever, okay? Um, in my Apostle Gen 5 video review, I showed you guys, and again, that could have been a dud. It could have just been my unit that I had, but it would time out and lag in certain aspects. Now, don't get me wrong. If I have a bunch of activities, like when I first set this up and I'm downloading apps, if it's downloading apps in the background, it's going to start to um, slow down in how fast it's moving. And most of the time when I'm downloading apps in the background, I just have it sitting on the charger and then I pick it up. But for your normal day-to-day -day tasks, listening to music, um, um, telling it to do things, there's next to no lag. So, well, I'll sort of get to that in a second. But again, um, the smoothest that I've seen where OS run. So kudos to my boy and... I guess I don't know what they did to make that work, but this is really the way that Wear OS was intended to be used. Great. So another pro to me, it's durable, military grade, stainless steel, so um, no scratches or scuffs or anything like that on the actual device. Like I said, it's an it's a nice looking standard sport watch in my opinion. Some people may not like it. I don't think it's the best looking watch. Don't get me wrong, but you know it is very durable. It's, it's supposed to be marketed sort of as an all around watch. And so it has to be durable enough to withstand all those. So again, kudos to that. I like that. Um, also, I like the way that I like my boy's approach to this watch in the device. So it understands Wear OS's shortcomings. So the biggest gripe for Wear OS is really the battery consumption. You're only getting a day out of almost any and all Wear OS devices because of the way that that um, operating system just uses so much battery. So they decided to combat that. Um, another thing, there's no built-in for Wear OS. For example, um, a lot of watches are supposed to be swim-proof, but there's not a feature to get the water out of the speaker. So you know for the Galaxy Watch Active and even um, the Samsung Galaxy Watch, the Apple Watch, there's a feature to push water out of the speaker. And so, oops, sorry, wrong button. If you hold that down, that is your Google Assistant. If you hold this down, this is essentially your power button. And then you write here, speaker draining. So you tap that. And that's just a noise that is made and it helps to push the water from out of the speaker. I don't know why that's not built into Wear OS, especially if you have watches with speakers like the Fossil Gen 5. Um, but I, I like that my boy, again, they're complimenting Wear OS. They, know, they realize the shortcomings of the device and so they added that. Another thing, battery life on Wear OS, it sucks. So what my boy did is they have this essential mode. This essential mode you can turn on by holding this button, you can turn it on and it essentially <laughs> um, becomes exactly this screen. So this is all the information that you get. And then if um, I did have it in essential mode, I could hold down this button and it'll display my heart rate. Now, essential mode turns off all actionable notifications and it isn't, it just becomes, I'm gonna say essentially again, it becomes a watch. So it becomes a watch um, you can say a dumb watch, but it also does track your steps and you do have the ability for it to track your heart rate. Now, my boy says that you're supposed to still get 24 hour heart rate tracking in essential mode. I have not found that to be true when, or at least if it is tracking it, it's not displaying on my screen. So when I put it in essential mode, I have to hold down this button here. Actually, I'll go ahead and do that now for you guys. So you can go ahead and see, just go ahead and put it in essential mode and then I'll pause the video so you don't have to see it afterwards. So. So essential mode tells you extend your battery life. Yes. So it goes into that and now it's in essential mode. So, and then it vibrates to let you know sort of that it like sort of shut off. So let me just put this on my wrist so you guys can see. And then if I hold down this button or just, I think I just tap it, there you go. It's going to display my heart rate. So we'll give it a second for it to pull it up. And once, so you see it shows 20, 71. So usually after a couple of minutes, it goes away and it doesn't just stay there. 
see it. I mean, it's just showing 71, so it's not actively tracking my heart rate because nobody's heart rate stays at just one number throughout a, a long period of time. It fluctuates. So if it is tracking my heart rate, um, it must be doing it in a second. You'll see it's going to disappear. Yes, yeah, it disappeared from the screen. It's either tracking it and not letting me know, but I doubt it because when I take this off here, those diodes are no longer on. So I'm going to turn the watch back on here. And to turn it back on, you just hold down this and you hold it on until the Wear OS screen comes on. This will go off. Am I doing this wrong? It should be this button. Maybe it's this button. Sorry. Sorry, guys. There you go. Sorry. See, so hold on the top button, not that one. My apologies. So, anyway, so when you put your watch into essential mode, those are the basic features that you get, and it greatly extends your battery life. So, ideally, if you were actually getting 24 hour heart rate uh, monitoring or tracking, you should be able to get sleep monitoring as well. That's something that I'll touch on in a little bit, but um, you don't right now. It'd be great if they could add more things into essential mode. I understand that by doing that, you would be decreasing the amount of um, time that you would get with the battery life. But um, so I'll go ahead and get into that right now. Battery life on this thing is amazing. Um, I can get easily through, I think maybe two, two and a half days with this watch. And that's with me working out. I usually work out like once, maybe one to two times a day. Now, if I'm working out two times a day, I'll probably get through maybe a day and a half. On the other hand of that though, I think that, so what that does not offer, I'm sort of going out of order here, but it doesn't offer sleep tracking yet. So I think that that's part of the reason why I'm getting so, um, so much or so good battery life. Really, it's because of this essential mode that comes off when the screen turns off, so it's not lighting up the OLED panel as well. So, like I said, battery life on this is great. I'm getting great battery life. If you want a smartwatch that's going to get you decent battery life, this is definitely one of the ones that I would recommend. Um, I already talked about durability. Another thing, Google Assistant. That's definitely a plus. The biggest thing that Wear OS has going for it is the fact that you have Google on your wrist. So, when you can just talk to Google and you have the power of Google on your wrist, that is such a major, and it can't be under, really, it's sort of undervalued, but it's... It's such a great tool to have. So I, and really, if you're using Bixby, you understand what I mean. So who was the president of the United States? The president of the United States of America is Donald Trump. Let me just tap there. How tall is LeBron James? LeBron James is six feet eight inches tall. Let's see. Turn off man cave lamp. Sure, turning off man cave lamp. See? Turn on man cave lamp. Sure, turning on man cave lamp. So, because you have the power of Google on your wrist, that means that you get the Google Assistant that does any and everything that you would normally have it do. So that means that it taps into your Google Home, um, and if you have smart things or other sort of um, smart home devices connected, you can use your voice to turn them on, turn them off. You can, of course, send text messages from your wrist. You can, um, I mean, you name it, everything that you normally could do with the Google Assistant, set reminders, set a timer, um, open up apps, Google search queries. Like I said, it's just the entire, the power of Google right here on your wrist. So matter of fact, I got a notification here. I don't want to put that person on blast, but let's see what that says. Hmm. I don't want to go ahead and respond to that, but I could use my voice to respond. And that's another thing with Google's text to speech is bar none the best, hands down. Siri or on the Apple platform is also pretty good, but definitely Google Assistant is better. So I know that you get the Google Assistant on all other Wear OS watches, but I've always had some sort of lag when using it on other Wear OS watches. Because there's no lag and no latency on this, it's super, it's just buttery smooth and it just works. So I don't know, again, I don't know what they did or why it works so great. And again, I just had the Fossil Gen 5. You guys can check out the review and it just was not as fluid or as fast. So like I said, Google Assistant on your wrist, that's awesome. Um, also another plus is the Mobway workout applications. 
you do have Google Fit on here, of course, and you can start and stop workouts. Um, but my boy also has their own slew of workout. So like I said, I have it set up. Actually, I don't think that I can change that for Tick Health. So when you tap that, this opens up your um, run. And, and if you know my boy um, or the Tick watches in general, they're really geared towards working out. So that's why they have their own sort of application for health. So you can do an outdoor run. Sorry, you can do outdoor walk, indoor run, cycling, freestyle, or swimming as well. Okay, so that's good. Um, and then you do have standard information that they tell you. Um, this is an auto track running. So that's another thing this does have. It does have auto track running and walking. I will say that it, it is not as good as Samsung's um, with S Health. Samsung's Health S Health is definitely better at being able to detect walking and running exercises. Um, I was walking with this and it detects it based off of speed that you're moving at. So not necessarily length of time. So even if you're walking kind of fast, if you don't pass its threshold, and I don't know what that threshold number is, it won't detect it. If you're running, it does a pretty good job of detecting it kind of fast. So on the Galaxy watches in general, the way it works is if you're doing something for over 10 minutes, it'll automatically, it'll pop up and let you know, hey, we're tracking this and it goes back and it, it has that whole 10 minute workout that you've been doing thus far and it does store it. Um, with this, when I was running for about a minute, minute and a half, it popped up and said, you know, it saw that I was running, it backtracked that minute and a half, so it recorded it and it recorded everything after that. But like I said, for walking, it's a little bit, it's more tough. So it's good that it has the workout detection, but it's not as good as I've seen on other devices. Okay. Um, and the Mavo workout applications are not as fully featured as Fitbit or other um, operating systems, but uh, they do the job. They're decent. Another thing that I like is because Mobboy made, and that this is really the biggest plus to using their slew of applications, is um, because they have this essential screen, when you're doing extended workouts, they will show the information on this instead of having that OLED um, screen being lit up. So if you're working out, any of those workouts that I just now showed you, it'll be a screen like this that'll display the information. So it's less taxing on your battery, right? So that actually helps to extend the battery life. So that's good, really good, and I like that. Um, moving on to other things that I enjoyed about this watch. We already talked about the battery life. Um, the speaker, as you guys saw, um, I did just have it um, read out some Google queries to me. Um, the speaker is decent. It's not like an amazing speaker. Um, voice calls do sound great. When talking with people on the phone, they could not tell that I was actually talking on a watch. It just sounded normal. So the microphone on this is also really good. I'm just gonna play something so you guys can hear it. I think I got some Wally queued up. It's the newest album. I'll turn it all the way up. So I mean, it's not like a an amazing speaker, but there's a, a limited number of Wear OS watches that have speakers. So, nice. Um, so, like I said, speaker's great. Also, this does have LTE, so that's another plus. This is the only Wear OS watch that has LTE. So, if you're somebody that has Android um, as a device, the only watches that you can use, um, similar to the Apple Watch, would be this or the um, Galaxy Watch Active 2 or the Samsung Galaxy Watch, okay? So, this is, like I said, the only Wear OS that has, only Wear OS watch that has LTE. So, that's actually a pretty big plus. Now, this is the LTE version, but I have not activated the SIM card, so I can't really speak on battery life and how that works too much um, in terms of if I just took this. I have taken this on like runs and workouts by itself, but I haven't had it connected to any cellular um, plan, so I can't tell you if it's a ding or hit on the battery too much, unfortunately. Um, another plus is this does have quick charging. So this dock right here, if you guys are interested in the dock, I got it from Amazon. I can throw the link in the description. Um, but it charges relatively quickly. Um, that was one thing that I didn't like about the Galaxy Watch Active 2. Um, it charges slower. It takes like maybe two and a half, close to three hours to charge. This, I mean, I have it on the charger for like an hour and it's like done. Um, and that's maybe like from low 20s to to 30%, it's like that in an hour, maybe a little bit over that. So the quick charging is um, a great plus. I really do like that. 
So now going on to things that I don't like. I don't like the fact that the second screen or panel, I think that it you should have an option for it to display more information. That's just me, that's sort of me being petty. Yeah, I would like the ability to just have more information there. Um, it really does remind me of the Garmin watches, like my Garmin um, 645 Music with that same sort of screen. So if you could just have more information there, that would be nice. Also, they claim that you get 24 hour heart rate tracking but it's not really 24 hours. Um, I can pull up the Tick Pulse app here, and I don't know why I can't get this to work, but so, for example, right now, the lights are not on, as we can see. This is supposed to be 24 hour, right? Let's see, I put it on my wrist. There's no way for it to know whether or not it's on my wrist. Sorry, put anybody on blast. So if I was to go to Tick Pulse, because that's the application that they use, pulls sorry and once I open that application then those lights come on okay now this is supposed to be and it'll show me it tracks here what my heart rate was over 24 hours now whenever I open this up the diodes come on and it's tracking my heart rate so like I said it's on but then when there'll be random times where I'll just take a peek let's say 10 15 minutes from now and those that and it's not on so it's not tracking my heart rate so I don't know What's going on there? If that's some sort of bug, I did reach out to Mobvoy and I left some sort of like a comment to figure what's going on in there. Um, I haven't really gotten a response as of yet. I don't know if that's like a common bug or not because I really haven't found anything on the internet. But it's supposed to be giving 24 hour heart rate monitoring, but it is not. Um, and of course, on this screen, if I wanted to, I could just tap that and that will have it pop up to show my heart rate, but it's supposed to be continuous. And that's what they're advertising, but that's not what's happening. Um, so because of that, you do get gaps in the Tick Pulse app from time to time, as you guys just saw when I showed you. Another thing, and this is more so um, from Wear OS with Google Fit, the Google Fit heart rate monitor, like to, well, the ability to connect to a heart rate monitor on Google Fit is very glitchy. As I, as I told you guys before with the um, Fossil Generation 5, you go into settings here. So I'm going to show you guys how it's done. Um, and I go to, well, actually I reset this device so it's not even gonna be on there. I reset the device because I wanted to see if the tick pulse, um, if there was a glitch there, but it's still doing the same thing. So if you go into Google Fit and you try to add, just go to, uh, I think I gotta go Google Fit. I'm gonna have to go through this whole thing because I didn't do that, so sorry guys. Alrighty guys, so I'm back. So I'm here and I do have, this is the Wahoo, um, uh, it's the tick, the, the, uh, you, yeah, you guys know what it's called. I forget the name of it right now, but I do use it to track my workouts with uh, my heart rate because it's a little bit, it's more accurate as we know than wrist-based um, heart rate monitoring. So I just put it around my chest, open this up, scroll down, scroll all the way down, settings. I'm gonna go to try to add it you can do that here so Bluetooth sensors scanning for whatever reason I don't know why so now of course it pops up just like it did last time when I did the gen 5 um, review but this is very glitchy and finicky sometimes it pops up and sometimes it doesn't so now it popped up and it's added it's not recording my heart rate because it was it would show a number down there so it's connecting doing this thing but it's very, very finicky. As you guys can see now, it's supposed to connect and then it's supposed to display my heart rate. It's not doing that. I don't know why. Um, and so I'm not blaming the watch because this is clearly something that's messing up at the operating system level. Because the same thing was happening on the generation five, um, the fossil generation five watch. Okay, so moving on, I wish that the um, built-in help app did offer a little bit more information. Um, it's pretty, I mean, it gives you information like steps, calories burn for the workouts that you did. Um, it gives you heart rate monitoring, um, the 24 hour tracking on the watch, on the application on the phone as well. But it doesn't give you everything that you would normally get from like the Fitbit um, watch, oh, I'm sorry, from the Fitbit application or from Garmin Connect. But you know, it is what it is. I still think that they do a pretty good job about it. Also, I wish that there was more third-party app support, and that's more on Wear OS. It's not on the watch itself. Um, things like, I would like YouTube Music to be on here, especially since 
Google Play Music is getting ready to take sort of an extended vacation. Google is canceling that. And um, the only way that I can really listen to music on here is through that. I don't have a Spotify account. It's, I mean, Wear OS is made by Google. So I'm expecting them to have a YouTube music app to come pretty soon. Um, but I guess that's not really third our third party application either because that's directly from Google. Um, but in terms of apps that you get on the Apple Watch, you don't get them on here. Um, sort of like, for example, sleep tracking. Um, this doesn't have built-in sleep tracking. They said that it's supposed to come with an update. They said that the Tick Watch Pro was supposed to have it as well, and that launched over a year ago. There's still no application for sleep tracking. So that's a little disheartening, um, the fact that they said that this was gonna come with one and they haven't had it for over a year. Now to combat that, if you had a third-party application that tracks sleep, that'd be okay. The only one that's available on Wear OS is Sleep As Android, and that one is pretty crappy because you have to start the sleep tracking manually. That sort of defeats the whole purpose. It's supposed to be auto sleep tracking. Um, if you're somebody that's been used to doing something like that, then it's not a problem, but if you've used the Apple Watch, Apple Watch doesn't have built-in sleep tracking, but there are a number of apps that you can use that do track your sleep. You don't have to start the sleep tracking. It just does it automatically. Same thing on the S Health through the Galaxy Watch Active and the standard Galaxy Watch um, watches. They just track your sleeping. Now, again, for everybody that's not that important, for me, I do like it. I'm fairly fitness focused. So any metric that I can get about my overall health, I would like to have it at hand so I can see that data, analyze it, and then sort of see how I can improve. Um, so it is what it is. I really do wish that they would launch that application fairly soon, or like I said, another third party application, or if my boy would sort of step up to the plate and have that come out, it's been over a year. Um, and then the last thing, I wish there was more watch faces. After messing around with the Samsung Galaxy watches and the, the Galaxy Watch Active 2, which I had more recently, realized it's not really, like you have Facer, and that way you can have more watch faces, but the quality of the watch faces to me are just not all that. Um, this is a decent one, sort of standard that came with it. If you want to add more or you want to change your watch face, you do hold this down that you can sort of slide over. And then of course you can pick them out from the um, from the Wear OS application from the phone as well. And like I said, you do have Facer. And I mean, again, this is sort of me being nitpicky because I still, I think that you have decent watch faces on here, but I just wish that you had something, I don't know, something better. And part of that, Two has to do with this is sort of a kind of screen here the screen this is a good screen don't get me wrong it's not a bad screen especially with when you have the secondary screen it lights up well in this direct sunlight it really can't be beat but because you have this second panel that's overlying it it's like the, the blacks are not as black okay and if you have used almost any other Wear OS watch you'll know exactly what I'm talking about like those dark blacks are just black and I mean this is an OLED panel but again, it's because of the design of the watch that it's that way. So it's not its not bad. I don't want you guys thinking that it's a bad screen, but it's something that you do definitely notice if you have used any of those other watches. So I said all that, and I don't want you guys thinking that I'm knocking this watch too much because I really do think that this is a great, fantastic watch. In fact, this is the watch that I would recommend to anybody that has an Android device, hands down. Um, this watch has been out, I, I think, for a couple of months, the Tick Watch Pro technically came out last year, um, but this variant, this variant or this version, is the one that I would recommend. Even if you don't end up getting LTE, but that extra gigabyte of RAM or extra 500 megabytes of RAM makes this thing just super fast. It just doesn't slow down. I have no issues whatsoever with Wear OS. It's just, like I said, that's not something that I usually can say in. Google on your wrist is great. Um, so, like I said, I would definitely recommend this to anybody, even even if you have a Samsung phone. I have the Galaxy S10 Plus, and I'm rocking this now over the Galaxy Watch Active 2. Um, this is just more fluid. I think that this is the way that Wear OS should have always been. I do think that there are improvements that can be made, don't get me wrong, but for things that you need from a smartwatch, you need fitness tracking, this has it. You need great battery life, this has it. You need the ability to add set reminders, talk to people on the phone. You wanna to listen to music while you're working. I mean, that's, I don't even know how different this is just not said, but you have it. This has, it puts checks in all of the check marks 
it's sort of a jack of all trades and master of none. Um, the one thing that I could say it masters is the Google experience with Google Assistant. Um, but yeah, I think that the fitness tracking could definitely be better. Uh, if you could get some VO2 max tracking in there, um, things of that nature, post hoc things, you know, that would be awesome. Um, but I know that that's not, this is sort of, it's a fitness tracker or watch that does fitness tracking um, for the masses. And if you're in the masses, you probably don't use all those features. So this is Max Tech Toy Box. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them down below. I'll do my best to get back to them. But if you're looking for a recommendation for a Android Wear watch or just an, a watch on that is compatible with Android Wear or with it with another Android phone and because it is Wear OS it actually does work with the Apple iOS as well but I I would recommend you stand with an Apple watch but if you do have an Android phone this is the watch that I would recommend I'm putting my approval my stamp of approval on this one okay so Max Tech Toy Box signing off hope you guys enjoyed the video Apologize it was a little lengthy, 